Down went the gunner, a bullet was his fate. Down went the gunner, and then the gunner's mate. Up jumped the sky, the pilot gave the boys a look, and then the gun himself as he lay beside his book. Shout, praise the Lord, and pass the ammunition. Praise the Lord, and pass the ammunition. Praise the Lord, and pass the ammunition, and we'll all stay free. Hold on a minute. Greetings, this is CJ, now with the Tactical Combat Clan, or TCC for short. Visit us by typing www.tcombat.com into your browser. Hopefully all is well since I last shouted at you in the TeamSpeak video. And my throat's recovered enough to do this video, so let's get started. This tutorial is all about your game server, at Art of War Central. If you don't have a game server, these guys are the bee's knees. You can pick up all sorts of game servers and dedicated boxes at www artofwarcentral.com. Go and have a look. For this tutorial you'll need to log into your Art of War account. This can be done by opening your browser and typing control.artofwarcentral.com into it. You will then be presented with a screen that looks like this. Now what we want to do is enter our username and password. To save us the bother of entering them again we're going to click on the remember me checkbox and then we're going to click on the green login button. So now you should be looking at a screen similar to this. This is the main game server screen. To start and stop the server you will need to click on the game server icon. It looks like a picture of a little joystick. The next screen details your game servers. It shows the game server's IP address and port, the name you've given to the server, any mods you have running on that server and the current status of the server. Clicking on the name of the server loads the next page. This details what you can do to this particular server. I've clicked on the TCC PO2 server. Here you can see the name of the server at the top of the box. Below that is the server IP address and port. Next is the server's FTP details which we'll talk about a bit later on. After this comes the status of the server and after that are the actions you can do to the server. Here you can see that there's two links, stop because the server is already started and restart. Clicking on the stop link will stop the server. When you click on this link, the page will refresh and you should see the server is stopped, indicated by the red stop text. Notice that the actions list will now have changed to start only. To start the server, all you need to do is click on the start link. Again, this will refresh the page and you should see a green running text with the stop and restart links now displayed. When you set up your server, you will be given an IP address and a port where you can connect. If you're unsure where to find this information then follow the procedures for starting and stopping a server until you reach the information about your server. Eventually you'll reach a screen which looks like this. Ok, now below connection information is the FTP information. Write this down and keep it safe. We'll need it later. Ok, now you need an FTP client. I recommend Smart FTP which is free for non-profit organisations. You can grab it at www.smartftp.com or you can use your own preferred brand. Once you have installed it and it's up and running, you'll need to enter the information into the FTP. Assuming you're using Smart FTP, look for a box at the top of the screen that says Address. In this text box, enter your IP address. Ours is 69276129. These are the first four groups of numbers that you wrote down. Next, you'll need to enter your login name and password. Finally, you'll need to enter the port. This is the last number after the colon that you wrote down. Now hit the green button with the white arrow pointing to the right located in the address bar. You should immediately see that a new window appears to the left of your folders window and tries to connect you to that IP address. If you're successful, you should see a bunch of different directories. An alternative to manually FTPing files up and down is the Art of War Central File Manager. This facility can be found by logging into the control panel and selecting game servers. Look for the little joystick again. Once the page has loaded, then click on the game server you want to use the file manager with. Here I've picked the armor server. 
Now click on the file manager icon or link at the bottom of the page. It looks like three boxes connected together. Once the page is refreshed you can see folders and files in the structured list. You can select the folders or files by clicking on the checkbox at the side of its name. The file manager allows you to perform different actions to files with the aid of a drop down list within the actions column. However you'll probably want to select your actions using the bar at the top of the screen. One of the most common uses for the file manager is to upload files. Position yourself in the folder you want to upload files to and click on the upload button at the top of the file manager window. It looks like a computer drive with an arrow pointing at the top of it. Now click on the browse button which will open up a dialog box which shows your computer's contents. Now you have to find the file you want to upload and click on OK. Once you've clicked OK you need to click on the green upload button and your file will be uploaded to your game server. Click on the cancel button if you wish to cancel the procedure. In addition to uploading you can create new files and folders directly on the game server. To create a brand new file you need to click on the new file button. This will open up a new page with an editor that you can enter information into. Once you have finished you need to click save and the file will be created. Similarly you have an option to create new folders by clicking on the relevant icon. This will create a folder in the folder you are currently in. The zip and delete options need you to select files and folders by using the checkboxes at the side. Obviously the zip file will compress what you have selected and present you with the file in the folder you are currently in. Delete however will remove the file from the game server. Use this with extreme caution. OK, you'll have to log into the control panel. See starting and stopping a game server for that. Look for the icon named Game Server, the infamous little joystick. OK, now find the server you want to install the mod to from the list. For me, it's the freshly installed Counter-Strike source server, and then click on it. Once this has been done you'll be presented with a screen that looks like this. You'll need to find the icon that looks like two joysticks with arrows that flow back and forth. It will have the words game mob below it. Once you have found it click on the image or the words and a new page will load. So when the next screen loads you should be presented with a screen that looks like this. The first item details the last mod you installed. In our case we didn't install a mod so no mod is reported. The next option asks what mod I would like to install and next to it is a drop down box. Click on the drop down box will display mods that you can install onto the server. Different servers will display different mods so don't be discouraged if yours doesn't look quite like this. Once you have selected a mod information about that mod will be displayed in the box underneath. This box is called the comments box. You don't need to type anything into it it's just for displaying information about the mod you're currently installing. The final item is the overwrite files checkbox. This option is to overwrite files that are necessary to install the mod. If you have previously installed a mod and you want to keep some files then selecting this option will not overwrite those files. Once everything has been double checked then click on the green button at the bottom marked install. There is also a cancel button just in case you change your mind. Once you hit the green button marked install, then Art of War Central will get to work installing your mod. For me this took 3 to 4 minutes. Also notice that you'll be given some information that your mod is being installed in the browser window. 